has deep seek made a difference to your world at this stage because it's taken a lot of industries by storm the fact we've got cheaper ai coming to the market you don't need very deep pockets to be able to build out ai has that added some fresh momentum do you think to the industry i think it has created a different thinking uh, the momentum still there large language model continue to be prevalent we continue to see huge demand for training the infrastructure at scale but obviously deep seek brought a different thinking about how we train these models. And the reality is that you can have smaller models uh, with better data and provide a better outcome. So I think as we think going forward what the uh, deployment of AI will look like, I think it's a combination of multiple models, what I call the mix, the mix of experts, that allows us to provide an agentic approach to workflows in the enterprise so they can accelerate the deployment of AI. Some industry experts say it has smashed the US monopoly on AI. That's been the wash up, that this proprietary model that has been growing very rapidly from the US tech, that is now done. Do you agree? I don't agree with that, but obviously open source will create a better opportunity for others to participate in the ecosystem, as it has been in other you know, inflection points in the market, like it was before with the cloud or the type of technology. So I'm a big believer of open source. In fact, when we talk about telco here, we talk about open networks and open standards. So I think in AI will be the same, but I think it will be coexisting both type of approaches. No different than we see in the cloud today with, you know, wall garden approach and yet open source approach for aspects of that of it. That was a big discussion, the open source versus proprietary. That's gone on for years here at the telecommunications industry conferences, but it really hadn't caught on a mainstream. That seems very different in 2025 when we're talking about democratizing access to AI. Yeah, well, I think, you know, the telco infrastructure and the telco industry has been a very conservative in their approaches. Obviously, it's a mission critical type of deployment and application. And so they wanted to see resilience and scalability of the open source approach. I think, you know, we have seen now a number of uh, telcos around the globe deploying open run. For example, HPE has enabled one of the largest telecommunications in Canada to deploy a complete open run approach where one third of the countries, the country subscribers is already on an open telecom. But as I think about AI, the deployment of automation intelligence, you will have to take a more open standard approach to make it cost effective. I want to ask you about the deal making because the Department of Justice has sued you to block your takeover of Juniper Networks, which is really against the optics of lighter regulation under the Trump administration that the market had been watching. How big an uphill battle are you facing to consolidate the market? Yeah, well, first of all, we are incredibly disappointed about the uh, DOJ's decision to sue for trying to block the transaction. First and foremost, HP and Juniper remain super committed to make this transaction a success. And we believe the thesis that the DOJ uh, has taken is completely flawed. The market that they saw was in the wireless line and they narrowed the market so small that they believe there's only three players in the market, when the reality is there's at least eight players competing in the market. In addition, when I think about, you know, outside the United States, this combination will provide customers, many of the telcos here, a very strong alternative to uh, other type of technologies, including from Huawei, which is a good thing for the United States from the national security perspective. So we will fight this in court. A trial date has been set for July uh, 9, and we believe we have a strong case.